Um, what do you know? What are you thinking? Uh, this is my first attempt, or our first attempt, because I have somebody else here in the uh, well, shed, studio, <laughs> cave, whatever it happens to be. The Aussie uh, studio. Yeah. Backyard studio. Um, first guest, uh, where we, we've actually been talking for far longer than we should have. We should have been recording it because there was some fairly rich, if spicy, sauce going on there. But and now you get the sloppy seconds. <laughs> uh, I, I will. I will let my guest introduce herself. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Kelly. Um, so I am generally a singer. Um, I have had a attempt at my own show on YouTube. It was originally going to be a podcast. I keep looking at you, sorry. Um, Doesn't matter, look at anyone It was originally a podcast, but um, I had so much trouble trying to upload it onto the podcasting thing because of my internet apparently. It was too slow or... Welcome to Australia. Mm -hmm. It it took hours and hours and hours. So I was able to upload it onto YouTube and that's how it became a YouTube show. So... Um, it is very backyard. It is very um, Australian, <laughs> and you know it's done on a one man budget. But that's what I have been doing. Um, I've been a singer most of my life, and my normal day job at the moment I teach horse riding. What else would you like me to say? Uh, I don't know. So your um your YouTube channel um karaoke backyard karaoke live at the shed. Uh, okay, Co- is COVID nineteen lockdown. Is it, a, is it actually in a shed? It is. Yeah. It, it originally started in the shed, but it was, you know, a little garden shed. The sound was just bouncing off and... Oh, that's awesome, isn't it? The, yeah, the when singers, it's just bouncing off. Built, built in reverb. Yes, yes, yes. It was just terrible. So um, we converted my friends under her double-story house, the garage part, to look like a shed. Just to give it a bit more space and... But don't worry, people did comment about the authenticity of it. You know, it's not really a shed, it's under a house. But yeah, anyways, we do what we can do with a zero budget, don't we? Well, yeah, but the thing is though, um, calling something a shed, it's it's still, it's like um, everything in the ends up having the, uh, a brand name. Like in America, a tissue is called a Kleenex. Yeah. It doesn't mean every tissue is a Kleenex. No. But... So a sh- calling something a shed is basically a space where you keep the murder implements. Correct. So a Correct. lot, a, a lot of places that would be under the house because you know some people don't actually have a physical shed. That's that's right. Yeah. yeah. Where, wherever it's a little space, you know, we we make our own little shed, our man shed, our woman shed, our studio, our whatever shed. So if that was lockdown, did you actually have a bunch of people there, or only a few no, people? Um, or so I was only. It was at the stage when there was only two. People allowed to come over. So, because how I came up with it, um, I was hosting karaoke before lockdown. Then um, all the karaoke people on the, you know, social network stuff saying, oh, we miss it, we miss it, we need to do karaoke. They were doing the virtual stuff, but it's just not the same. It's nothing like the live feeling of an audience clapping and appreciating and having fun. You're feeding people's narcissism. Mm, yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's, um, that's, that's how social media works. Yes, You yes. Get, that, get that little hit, that, that uh, what is it, endorphins or something? Yeah, or dopamine. Yeah, yeah, dopamine. It's one of those things. I think they're both, but they work in a different uh, So, yeah, you get, you get that little hit. So, see, when I was younger, it was embarrassment. Embarrassment did me the uh, – it, it gave me – it wasn't necessarily constructive or good – but I got a hit from it. So I would do some very silly things when I was younger because it got me attention. It's because attention hit, yeah. Because I wasn't a good sportsman. I wasn't a good conversationalist because when I was younger and before I learnt to be verbose, to, to, to use bigger words, yes. which I had to do to circumvent some of the weird circuitry in my brain, um, I would just do embarrassing things. Doesn't, but, it does, uh, we've does, all got to find our niche, don't we? Mm. We've all got our own little special talent. <laughs> so Just a matter of finding it. But yeah, it uh, came from people saying, uh, we can't sing anymore. So I thought, you know what? I've got a system and I'll invite a couple of people over every weekend and we'll just have a little sing in the shed. And then I thought, you know what? We can make a show out of this. So, And I had Powderfingers um, 
the guy, he's got a recording studio now. Do you think I can remember the name? You think I'd remember the name? Is it the uh, uh, like a producer or yeah, is it someone from? Yeah, he used to be in Powderfinger, yeah. Um, Bernard Fanning, he was the lead singer of. What's another? No, it wasn't him. Uh, he, what's the that's other? That's the only the, name I know um, from the band. Oh, what's his name? And I think it's about episode number four with Chris Sims, but her band goes. He um, they record at his studio. Keep going. And she asked him if I could put him on my show just to advertise his recording studio because that's how I was getting things done, bartering. I'll oh. advertise on your my show if you can help me out with something. So that's how I got a lot of it done and a, a lot of um, sleepless nights editing. OMG. Uh, I used to, uh, when I first started doing YouTube. I loved it, but it was tedious. When oh, my I f- God. When I first started doing YouTube a few years ago, so I'd get up in the morning and make, record some of a video on the way to work, work a full day, end yep. up doing a bit of overtime just because when you're managing things invariably, that's what happens. Make more of a video on my way home, hang out with my wife for a while. She goes to bed you fairly balance. early. Then I'd stay up all night editing videos. And, and I, if you I, move one little bit, you got to move everything. Well, it depends on what software you're using. Now, okay. I've just changed and I can't operate the new editing software, which is why I've chosen this system to make videos, to try I love and... InShot. It's just a plain app. And, you know, you've got the top range ones as well. At, what is it, Adobe and... Oops. Oh, no, I just couldn't hear you. Yeah, sorry. I was sitting back. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's what I was using in... Um, What's it called? The, the yeah, Pro yeah, yeah. Um, um, Premiere Pro. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's what we were using in uni. And the reason that I've stopped using it is I can't afford 70 bucks a month. Yeah, it's very it's expensive. It's like 800 bucks a year. Great. If, if, so if, if I had 800 bucks, I wouldn't be using a, a 20-year-old camcorder. Yeah. And, yeah, and but we do the best we can do. hand microphones. Eh? And you do the best you can do as long as you get the show up. And, you know, if you've got the great chemistry and the banter and, and people want it, you've got to make the audience want to, you know, um, relate to you. Engage. Yeah, they want to relate to you. They feel like you're just a normal person with them. You're just a bit well, more I'm, confident I'm, to get on TV. I'm so <laughs> I'm so normal that, hang on, hang on one sec. I'm so completely normal that... Uh, I think I've got a bit of Italian in me. Look. Here you go. The hands. I, I'm so normal that Jeff's just fat and completely ordinary. <laughs> um, yeah, well, see, see, as yet, I don't know what my audience is. Sorry, guys. I don't really know what the audience is because it depends on the rapport with the co-host and the rapport with the guests. Yeah, and what subjects we come up with. Exactly. And being the day and age that we live in, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to... Which subjects to broach? Yes. You know. Because uh, it could be, you know, n- technically not. It, 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 yes, it's verboten. Yes. It's, it's uh, ixnay on the whatever you're talking oh, about. what's it called? Um, what's Dr. Phil call it? Uh, it's like a quote, you know, he quotes him back saying, Vivar- I think, yeah, what you just said. Vivar- verboten. Yeah, something like that. He says, you know. Like it's a quote, it's a fact. He's already, I've got it on the tape. So you said it, darling. So don't even try and deny it. I said I wasn't going to uh, edit this, but I realized in my uh, concern for being prim and proper, but I didn't even pick up on verbatim. Watching YouTube videos, it's like you can watch a, 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 a brain surgery. It doesn't mean you can perform brain surgery just because you've watched it on a but, I mean, on a National Geographic special. I think all of us um, are Dr. Google at some time in our life, aren't we? Yeah, but every time I look at it, I end up, uh, it says I've got cancer yeah, or I've, Lyme disease I've got or something. All. I've got every disease. Like, I'm like, I've got that symptom. Oh, my God, I'm dying. So, so you just got to get out of that rabbit hole straight away. Yeah, yeah. WebMD, I have a sore throat. It's, oh my God, oh my God, you're dying. Is there, yeah. is there pus or is it what, this or that? Oh. Yeah, no, a no. A lot of people self-diagnose these days. Well, we can't afford it, can we, in COVID? Like, uh, you just get into a job like, you know, I was doing karaoke. As soon as COVID come, that entertainers are the first to get shut down because all the places are shut down. But speaking of that, 
my uh, my my boss at one of my jobs, he uh, actually got married in secret during COVID, and then actually had the wedding just a few months back. Okay. And they got this band, but the band was basically a bunch of session musos that had ended up getting together because they hadn't been in bands. They had just been doing jobs in, studio. in studios yeah. and stuff. But because no one was making anything or any of that sort of stuff, they sort of got together. And these guys were just really, really, perfect. really... Well, I don't know about perfect, but it might yeah. have been the environment that was imperfect, not necessarily them. Because they're very skilled. They were tight. They knew what they were doing. Um, there was like three different singers in the band. So it gave you a bit of variety because, yeah. you know, sometimes if you listen to the same person singing, if they sing in the same way, there's some exceptional singers out there that are either just super gravelly and you put up with it and it doesn't matter. Like uh, bit of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy Barnes. I was thinking more uh, what's his face from ACDC. Uh-oh. Brian, Brian Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> I, who I actually liked more than Bon Scott, to be honest. Okay, yep. I actually preferred his voice. But then you get singers like Axl Rose. I mean, he's a douche, oh. but he's got a really, really, really good vocal range. And if you didn't know, you didn't know. And there are some other singers like that. Like you look at uh, some of the early Aerosmith songs, oh. like um, Dream On. And until he screams in that song, you don't even know that it's... Yeah. Steve Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The funniest thing about that is he wasn't even ever going to be the front man. He was the drummer. Oh. But they couldn't find a good enough front man. Wow. And he's got charisma, hasn't he? I he mean, does. He's got charisma. I mean, he's got a giant mouth, but... Um, well, all the better to make all those yeah, noises uh, with. Yes, that's correct. Um, I'll well, but I mean... I'll like, just leave that one. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, no, it, it's pretty funny when you, you, you read about the... How they got there. Well, you, even, even like Brian Johnson in ACDC... He, Is that the <clears throat> no, that's Angus Young. Okay. Brian, uh, Brian Johnson's the, the lead singer. You when I did the, the leg cock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Brian Johnson's the lead singer of ACDC. But he only went to the audition because he happened to be getting paid 200 bucks to make an ad from his mate a few blocks from oh. where the audition was because he just opened a new shop, a new mechanical workshop, and just had to get back to his mechanical workshop, couldn't leave his... And he wasn't going to go. The only reason that he did is because he was in the area. And there's so many stories like that, um, how people just have been in the right place at the right time and say, um, like Ray Morris, the f makeup artist. Um, I have no idea who that is. She's a very famous makeup artist. She was just um, like an apprentice or lackey. And Naomi Campbell fired her. You know, you're not doing my makeup good enough and just picked her and said, come and do it. And then she became one of the best ever. Well, the I'm best. She's got books, everything. She teaches classes. That's probably debatable. Yeah. But I mean, you look at... um. But it's amazing how that, it does happen a lot. It, it just, to me, that's, you know, um, serendipity. Well, I mean, it sort of is, but it's like, see, everyone makes fun of Ray Bradbury. So if you don't know, if you're watching in another country, Ray Bradbury was a... Uh, a figure skater. He wasn't a figure skater. He was a speed skater. <laughs> Ray Bradbury is this guy. I was speaking of Stephen Bradbury. Now, what happened is everybody in the final fell over and he got the gold medal and everyone was making fun of him because he only got the gold because he didn't fall over. But at the end of the day, he was still in the finals at the Olympics. So he yes. was still like one of the seven fastest skaters on the planet. So making How fun of him for that was a bit dodgy. But that's what people tend to do. So I had a friend that was lucky. No matter what he did, he fell on his feet. But I don't necessarily like but I don't necessarily think that's what it was. I think a lot of it was he happened to put every feeler out everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what we saw as him being lucky might have taken him months to pull off. He might have had to have get so many ducks in a row yes. and be plinking those things with that the the BB guns that you used to be allowed to oh, shoot. Oh, the shooting shoot, gallery, yeah. yeah. Um, Dream world. <clears throat> the, the, we just saw him as being lucky. Look, he just fell into this. But no, it's, it's, it's again, That's it's not what you know, humans, it's who you know. You have to, yeah. Us as humans, we have to pull, pull soppy sim. Small poppy syndrome kind of, you know. We don't like to see someone doing better than us. I, I mean, a part of us does want to do it, but there's still this bit of envy because they're doing better and I'm having a bad day. How come you're always having a good one? There's a lot of people like that out there. Well, in general, I find it's younger people. Oh, as, oh don't as, even talk to me about the well, younger Well, as generation. people get older, 
because they know how hard they've worked for what they have. So I might I might only have this tiny little bowl of nuts here, but I know that I go out and I do a proper day's work so that my wife lets me have a tiny bowl of nuts. Right? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's not quite true. She's allowed me Sorry. to build. She's allowed me to build this studio. I mean, I have worked a lot of hours to to get to you facilitate get this, yep. and she's helped me. The art on the wall behind you there. Um, oh no! I mean, look, it came from Etsy, and and we framed it from uh, Kmart, but hey, it works. It works. It it does what it needed and to do. And you don't have to spend a million dollars like some of the, like you know, say someone bought you a million dollar diamond ring, or you know. The most expensive diamond in the world. If someone that I truly loved made me something out of a Coke thing or whatever, I'd cherish that more because they actually made it for me. They put thought into it. They just didn't go and say, oh, the biggest one. What was a film? Um, like something like, dude, oh, no, no, no. It was um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure where right. they gave the princesses Excellent. the the Excellent. little the little Cracker Jack rings, um, which is, yeah. Excellent. So... <laughs> Did you say you were studying uh, when yeah, we were talking I, before? Yeah, well, I'm about to start studying. Um, I just had a few – my mum had a stroke and just a few things have set me back as life usually does, but we have to keep pushing ahead. Um, so I was doing a Bachelor of Counselling, specialising in substance abuse and, like, family – So is that – so the specialisation in substance abuse, is that the normal college – no, um, no, no. Hang on, hear me out. Okay. The normal college substance abuse, just like the amateur gynecology and and chemical dependency <laughs> that, that that most uni students partake in, or are you trying to deal with these people once they get older? I think it's more the yeah. long term. Yeah, the long term people that um, are still denying to themselves. If you can't be honest with yourself. Because what you have to have a catalyst to give up drugs. Yeah, what do they say? You can reason. lead a horse to water, but you yeah, can't make a drink. You cannot make someone give up something they're not ready for. Something has to be a catalyst for them to go, okay, this is more important than this. And that is your catalyst for um, for making that change. Like, for instance, if you're, ki- you're watching your kids grow up in this drug, domestic violence kind of atmosphere, what what are their chances of going straight into that life? because that's what they've seen monkey see, monkey do. But if you can see that when you're not in your drug haze, when you come out into your little 10 minutes of I'm straight, (laughs) um, you actually go, look, the reason my kids are playing up is because they want my attention and I'm giving it to all these people over here because they've got the drug or one or the fun or whatever and I'm telling my kids to nick off or whatever just because I couldn't deal with that. So... When you start seeing how it's affecting your, your children and the things you've done to get money and the things you've stolen from your family and the people you've lost in your life, that makes a catalyst for you to go, right, I'm either going to be this forever and live in jail or I'm going to do something with my life and use my knowledge and my experience to help other people grow from it. So that's that's one of the reasons I want to do it because, you know, we've all got our... Um, in a child wounds and our our life experiences, so I'm, I just want to um, impart some of my wisdom that I've learned along the way to help people not go down those roads. I, I'm usually more of the uh, oh at my because uh, I, I worked at a, a servo while I was studying at uni, and I've still got that job a bit. Like I'm working next Saturday for a few hours. Um, Side hustle. Well, something like that. Uh, the the government gets most of the money in taxes <sighs> anyway. But what happens is when they Everything. put when they put new staff on, they put them on the counter with me for a while, and they say, um, "Watch what Jeff does, and never ever do that." That's nice. <laughs> well, because because I say things to people that wind people up, but usually I can unwind them a bit, you know. But I mean, sometimes I can't. I had a guy who said he was much more important than me and I was just a checkout chick behind the counter and, and he was swearing his ass off at me, um, thumping on the counter and everything else. My time is precious. I run my own business. You can't know what that means. I mean, I have my own business, but... Um, and I went, look, just aren't you in a hurry? Don't you have a business? Yeah. And, oh, let's step outside and, and oh, have wow. a fist fight. And meanwhile, the, the, 
fast food place really next aggressive. door, there's all these heads popping around the corner. And there's like, you know, like in the cartoons where they, the heads all pop around the tree. So there's all these heads popping around the corner watching this guy and they're all shaking their head at this guy. He's wanting me to go outside and fight him because I wasted his time. And he wants to waste some more being a... Which made no sense. And then he, even when he got outside, he's still ranting and raving and thumping his chest and swearing oh God, at me. Oh my God, that's like a Neanderthal. And the person the behind hell? me goes... What? What was that about? And I went, I legitimately have no idea. Apparently, I'm not important enough. Oh. But what's that saying? It's important to be nice, but more in... But oh. it's... It's, uh, it's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. Uh, but see, that's, uh, that's a conversation for another day, the nice conversation, because people say if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. But if your friends... There's friend, always a contradictory. Well, Double-edged sword like life. Yeah, but it, the, the, the problem is people partaking in self-destructive behaviour, is it nice to say, good on ya, or to slap them around the ear to try and get them to pull their head in? Which one's the nicer? That is a really big conversation oh, for another it? day. Because, but it, it, like I said, it's a double-edged sword, depending on the circumstances, whether you have to slap someone out of it to, for their own good because they're just not getting it, or you go and just delude them. Like, like for instance, in The Voice and all that, when those people... Why don't they tell those poor people that they can't sing? When because their family support uh, them and go, oh, I'm because the best it's good singer. television. It is, yes. Because it's uh, well, apparently I don't really no, watch I television. Have, I so. auditioned and I got kicked out for, like, I got up to almost the TV part when I was really young, like when it first started when Guy Sebastian was in it and that. Oh, but, that was. Um, but I didn't get to that stage. Yeah. I got to like the third. There was a couple more stages. You obviously didn't have enough of a sob story. No, and I didn't. I wasn't like. You know, woefully inadequate. <laughs> or uh, just unique. You know, they were just different, that's all. Shannon but I don't think wasn't that completely, uh, wasn't all that different. But I don't think that I mean, what they about should me? encourage I'm, them and I'm let different. them go on TV and embarrass themselves like that. Um, and they're delusionally thinking like they're arguing with him going, but I am told I am the best. And my they're ma- laughing at them. My mama always said, mm. um, yeah, it's... But, you know, they call it reality TV. There's nothing really reality about any of it oh, at the end of the day. Not, no, it's not. Yeah. It's all staged. <laughs> so. I've done a few um, movies and things like that, just extras. but And the work that goes into them, like the people behind the scenes, they're the ones who deserve the, the money and the hand because they spend hours and hours setting up the lighting and this. Yeah, and and, at, at, and when you first start out doing that sort of stuff, you get treated so appallingly. Like um, but I mean, look, that's that's sort of the way it works. Is you do the crap jobs, okay. learn the crap jobs, and then work your way up. If and the only the thing you thing start there. at the top is a hole. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd rather come from the bottom. I'd rather be poor than rich any day because. Yeah, I don't know. I identify I'd appreciate as, it more. I identify when I earned, as a billionaire. When I got to rich. Well, I'm going to say that's another discussion for another <laughs> day. Merit. Is is something that's sort of falling by the wayside a bit. This 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 society of participants. I'm very old school, and I believe in all those old ways. And I'm really disappointed in humanity these days. It's not all of humanity. It's not, but the way that it's getting pushed, we're going into subjects we shouldn't be. Just the way it's getting pushed um, is not cool. No, no, we'll have this discussion another day. So, where did you grow up? I'm a I'm a hundred percent Aussie, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Australia's a big um, ass place. No, no, just um, Brisbane girl. And and you didn't get killed by the drop bears and the red no, eye roos no, no, and no, but I guess no like snakes and spiders tried to kill you. No, no. Uh, yes, again, Americans. Bit me you all week. think everything here is trying to kill us, and it's just a not. Spider bit me last week, and my whole throat swelled up, and my tongue. I couldn't swallow, speak. It was. I fell out of a second floor window because a uh, um, redback spider. I was cleaning <laughs> the gutter and it went, and I just went super woozy and just fell out of a second floor window. So it bit you? Yeah. Oh, what happened? You got only like a half an hour or something? No, yeah. not redbacks don't usually okay. kill an adult. They oh, pretty okay. much, but no, no, like funnel webs and stuff are pretty deadly. No, it was just a redback. They're hairier, aren't they? <laughs> Bigger and hairier. Um, oh, it's the huntsmen's are the really oh, hairy no, they, huntsmen and wolf they spiders. Jump. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we've I got we've got scary that was things. The funniest but thing ever. She's gone. She's hit it, and it's it's like it turned around. You can imagine its face, like oh, you want to go, and it just flew at her. And we could, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> her hair's gone back like that, like you know the wind. 
And she, it was the funniest thing ever, and she's screaming. So what, um, where in Brisbane? Um, okay. When my stepfather was a harness um, racing trainer, the Pacers, Albion Park, all that. Um, he died when I was 15, so that we spent that out in Jimboomba, Park Ridge. You know, horses, you could have a big farm. Not anymore. Now it's just all houses. Oh, is it? Pretty much. Because we used to live on Chambers Flat Road there and, you know, where the caravan park is and the golf course. That was the whole property we lived on. It was a hun- uh, You know the Wanlesses? You've got to know the Wanlesses. I know of the Wanlesses. I, I, don't, I don't know them personally. I yeah. haven't... I haven't they, I they haven't walked up property. and gone, hey, Ron, how the hell are you going? Yeah, Ron. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he's an Elvis. He kind of reminds me of Elvis with that black okay. hair and, you know, in those days. Yeah. He really looked Elvisy to me with the um, Las Vegas look. Yeah, the Las Vegas the, look. The big ass gold yeah, dark yeah, glasses. Yeah. I think that was his fat days, wasn't it? Wasn't I don't know. a little know. fat in those days? Oh, near the end there when he, yeah. when he had a heart attack on the shitter. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of a story my uncle told me. <laughs> my uh, my uncles, I really want to do a show on them about my nan, my nan and my two uncles. They're twins, but one's a um, one's six pack, you know, a stubby short of a six pack. But he's not because he's cunning. He knows what he's doing, but he doesn't. You know, some things he's got no idea, but then he can go and use his key card. So you can't tell me you're not. He knows what he's doing, but he's the funniest ever. And then my other uncle's normal, but he's full Australian. You know what I'm talking, Northern Territory Australian. How he is, he's up to stick, mate. You know, that means you're pregnant, apparently. But the sayings that they have up in Darwin are just full Aussie. I've never heard anything like it. And he goes, oh, my mate went into the bush one day because he had to chuck a big turd. <laughs> like, it's so crude, they're so crude. Uh, like, we're crude, but that's Pretty, it's pretty crude up there. And he goes, um, he was gone for a while. I went over and here he is dead. <laughs> he had done the biggest, yeah, apparently he had a heart attack because he pushed so hard. <laughs> and he, he just got, hey, dead over here, buddy. Like, they're just so, they're just so um, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, how, how, how nice is that? You thought you are just going to go and empty out and really did empty out. Uh, how, how would you uh, play that at the funeral? Oh my god! <laughs> Died doing what he loved. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he anyway, loved, he loved to back one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're gonna have to go. Yes. we've been sitting here. I don't even know how long we've been going. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, we we were talking for a long time ahead of time. So, but we'll do this soon. Yeah. Uh, still no schedule. Still going to try and post stuff every day, but uh, we'll let you know. Um, nice to meet you all, everyone. Yeah, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, virtual world. we'll see Kelly very soon. And uh, as, as I always say, uh, uh, that's all I've got to say about that. And um, So what do you think about that one now, hey? Yeah, <laughs> be excellent to each other.